so everything was going so your so your career was going great. Yeah. And then you had this you had the instance that happened with the uh allegations, right? Yeah. Is that the best way to say it? How do people Yeah, I mean there's allegations against me, stuff I didn't do, but that gets out in social media, the media writes about it and uh, to be fair, like they were very serious allegations like what was alleged was very you know should be investigated and should be taken very seriously um just the, you know the way the system works it's like those get those allegations get made there's an open investigation you know i'm advised not to say anything so it's only it's a very one-sided discussion for a long period of time right and then that influences public perception over it and then when the facts start coming out when the truth starts coming out it's a much smaller uh uh, there's there's a lot less buzz around it, and so the public perception's already been influenced in a certain way. It must have been um, harrowing to go through. Yeah, it sucked. <laughs> it sucked. Um, it still sucks. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, so, and it doesn't even sound like it was that. Cr it sounds like there was just you message with a woman online. You guys both agree to spend time together. You spend time together. Um, it's later revealed that she had the idea that she wanted to, she had a plan or a strategy to, um, did it say like to take from you? I'm trying to think what the strategy was. There was, there was, yeah, texts about, you know, taking my money, um, Gosh, getting man. in, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, next victim next star victim, picture yeah. for the Dodgers. Yeah. Um, and when, what's so crazy is, Trevor, is I was like three months ago, I'm looking at some stuff online. Mm -hmm. and am I okay talking with you about this? Yeah. Do you feel okay? For sure. All right. Um, I'm looking at some stuff online. I see pictures of the girl and I'm like, how do I know this girl? I had, she had connected with me over social media mm. at some point. Um, and we met up, she came to a comedy show. And then she came afterwards. We went to my hotel. We just sat in the lobby and chatted. Yeah. And uh, she like knew some friends. We had some mutual friends and stuff. And um, but we just sat there and chatted. And then I got her an Uber home. Yeah. Um, thank goodness, I guess, because you know. But but that it just blew. I'm like looking. I'm like, how do I? But even that to me, because I know she. I felt like she wanted to stay over and spend time. Mm. You know, it just blew my mind. I'm like, is this? Is this like a thing, like, was this person like doing this kind of stuff regularly or was it a just happenstance that, you know, anyway, it yeah, just I, that, and that got me even more into your world kind of. Yeah. And, uh, and I really started to look back at what had gone on and, and man, it was just, I think a lot of people felt like it was just a really raw deal. Yeah. I mean, I certainly feel that way. Um, I can't change it obviously at this point like it, it it is what it is like the situation happened um i've had to I, i've had to do like two like two main things one i've had to like self-reflect okay how did i get into this situation where like something like this is even possible yeah and then two i've had to look towards the future and try to have something that i'm moving towards or something that I'm trying to accomplish because if I don't, I would just get mired in this really negative stuff. Um, and that's, you know, it's not good for mental health. It's not good for productivity or the people that I'm around or, you know, wow. stuff like that. So I've done a lot of reflecting and like looking at mistakes that I made and, um, in, in, in a lot of that, like there's a lot of, components to this whole situation like number one like my interactions with uh females like in general like i paid very little attention to my personal life because i was so focused on baseball and then when i started my businesses it was baseball and business and i yeah. just didn't pay attention to anything else so i would just like i didn't think any of it someone would hit me up on instagram and I'd be like oh yeah I yeah let's go on a over, date yeah. do whatever i i didn't think anything of it and I think it at the time it was like, well, I, I treat people well and I'm respectful and like I don't I'm not doing anything improper. And so like that's fine. I'm Yeah, that's protected. a way to live. I'm living yeah. the way you're supposed to be living. Yeah. yeah. And it never even crossed my mind that something like this could happen. Um, 
but you know, I was associating with people that were not, that didn't see the, yeah, people were like hitting me up on Instagram because they knew me somehow, but I didn't know them. Right. I, you know, I would just meet up with them. I knew very little about them. Um, that was dangerous in my position. Part of like been what there. we discussed about the software update, like I see myself as just this guy that's like even with everybody else. It's just, know. you know, and then I get into a position in life where that's not the case and I become a target and I just didn't see like the signs of being a target or whatever. And so I didn't update my software early enough. And it's a bummer. Yeah. It's a um, bummer because you also, you want to be able to meet people on even terms. That's the toughest yeah. thing about sometimes having some popularity, I think. And something that's sometimes kind of like, I don't want to say sad because nobody's like, Hey, look, man, you get to have a lot of neat, do a lot of neat yeah, things. I don't, I don't ever want to come off like a victim. Like it was like, I was treated no, I don't think it this sounds way like or that. whatever. It's just like, there are realities to the certain situations. And right. Definitely very, very positive, like being a professional athlete and like having that opportunity. Like there's so many positives to it. Um, I don't ever want to come off like I'm complaining. Yeah. But there are certain realities that go along with it that you have to be cognizant of. And um, yeah, I just, I didn't update quick enough to be cognizant of them before it happened. I've updated now. Yeah. Like I've changed a lot of things, how I do things in my personal life. Like I'm very careful of who I meet and how I meet them. Um, you know, I'm not having the same type of just casual sexual relationships and I'm not agreeing to do the same types of like sexual things. Um, I'm not like dating a bunch of people. I've like really locked down my personal life and gone back to the, to the square one. Like what do I care about in a personal relationship? Okay. I want someone that's a, B, C, D, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Let me go try to find those things actively instead of just being okay with anybody that's approaching me just to have someone around in those blank moments yeah. where like, oh, I have two hours at night and I have nothing to do. So like, I'll just have someone. I'll meet up know, with I'm, somebody. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, um, dude, it's saying, look, I can relate. I'm not trying to take your conversation here, but just young men can relate to that. Yeah just the same type of thing. It's like, and even young women, it's like, it just becomes a habitual thing. Yeah. You know, people think there's, you know, but it's like, yeah, sometimes the reason why maybe I haven't landed exactly where I would like to be. Um, it's, yeah, it's like, have I, if, well, I just, if I just kind of take whatever, sh like shooting star passes through the sky, yeah, as opposed to going out and looking for like yeah. somebody that's the real fucking sunshine, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, and not you, Mike Clevenger, but uh, <laughs> like a preferably yeah. a female. Yeah. But um. <laughs> but yeah, I feel you, man. It's like I can all day because people just kind of come and go all the time. Yeah. And that's fine. You can do that. But if you really want to go out and you and like emulate what you want into the world, and then hopefully get that back. You know? Yeah. I think long term wise, like it's just a much more healthy uh, situation for me personally. Mm -hmm. Um to be surrounded by people that are interested in the same things that push me in a positive way to get better, to learn more, yeah. to achieve more or whatever that support me in moments. That's one of the biggest things is like getting through the last couple of years. I and mean, even today, like it's still a struggle today with, you know, there's still ongoing like ramifications of everything. Um, but just having the support group around you that like, you know, these people care about you and not, the attributes that you know, like, not the bank account or the fame or the notoriety or whatever, the lifestyle. Yeah. Like when shit hit the fan, right. Was it like, did it kind of, un was it totally a shock to you? It was, it was pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I went from focusing on my next start to then like this article came out and then I'm having all these conversations and then I'm not allowed at the field and I'm still going to pitch in two days, but then I'm not going to pitch in two oh. days. And then I can't take the team flight back because uh, I'm not allowed to be with the team right now. And then I can't take a commercial flight back home because I'm my name's everywhere. And it's such a big story that like it's going to be a disaster at you know taking commercial flight to renting a car and driving from DC, like back across the United States in the middle of season, not knowing when I'm going to rejoin the, like it was a, who drove with you? Um, I drove with my agent, Rachel. Oh, that's sweet um, yeah, she was in DC and then we were there for two or three days and then drove back across country. Um, 
Fuck. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it happened pretty quick. And then obviously like you have the legal stuff that plays out. You have, you know, investigation and, um, you know, it was never, never arrested for anything. It was never charged with anything. Yeah, there was but never that, any. That drug out for, uh, uh, drug out is the wrong word. Cause like the allegations are serious and they should have, you know, they looked into them thoroughly and I respect the hell out of the police for doing that. Like, I think all allegations like this should be looked into with that amount of thorough, uh, thoroughness. Yeah. But it, it lasted for nine months before the decision was made that there was going to be no, no charges, whatever. The whole time I was like not able to be with a team. Uh. There was no resolution. There's no, I didn't know when any of those decisions were going to come out. So I'm just in this holding pattern. And then there was MLB suspended me. And then there was, you know, we, um, appealed the suspension mm -hmm. and then that took another, I don't even remember how long that took another period of time. Um, things move slowly in the, you know, as they go through courts and as they go through, uh, arbitrations and stuff like that. So and who was there, who was like really there for you while you like, yeah, um, parents have been, parents have been great. Um, uh, Rachel, I've mentioned, um, she was there, my business partner, Tosh, uh, a lot of my, uh, employees that I consider close friends, Kevin, Eric, um, you know, we've hired more people along the way as well that have been like there, um, all the time. Um, yeah, friends. I mean, there's people that I just know that for, you know, since high school or whatever that like would check in with me coaches. Um, I don't want to name names because yeah, I don't know yeah, whatever, but a lot of coaches and in, in that I've known through baseball, a lot of players, teammates. So you had some good support. Yeah. Um, and I think it's because people that I've played with, people that I've been in the clubhouse with, people that I've known personally looked at their experience with who I am and what they know of me and like what's being said. And they just like, nope. <laughs> that there's no way Doesn't that there's no way that happened yeah. and um yeah so I, I think you know publicly it's been seen as like i'm this you know there's reports that i you know dodgers organization doesn't want me around and teammates don't this and i'm not welcome here and all that stuff but like what's been seen publicly and my experience of what's been going on kind of behind the scenes and and my interactions with people and stuff like that have been completely different. Wow. Um, so it's actually been, it's been good. Like knowing that, you know, the, the people that I know that have been around me have that, uh, amount of, I guess, trust or that have had a good experience with me and yeah. like believe. Yeah. So Mookie Betts yeah. said some nice things. There was an, that, yeah. um, or that that's what they, they put out in the articles. You just don't know with a lot of these articles, man. Yeah. And the lawyers too, that's the shadiest part sometimes is yeah. like, um, it seemed like in your instance, the lawyers, uh, use the media to make you look worse. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's uh, fucking like, so there's this, why wouldn't you just do what the rule, like it just, man, that fucking made me, it just was sick. It was I, sickening. It seems like there's this loophole having been through it where like you can make a domestic violence uh, restraining order request. You can file for for one of those and you can write a whole bunch of stuff and that's fine because you have to be able to write what happened and make your claim. And then that is filed. That becomes a public document. You don't have to attach your name to it, but you can attach the other person's name to it. Wow. And then it takes time for that to go through, to get scheduled, to get heard, to get decided upon. But the damage in today's society has already been done as soon as that becomes public. That like, you know, we we went to the domestic violence restraining order court, which is like the lowest standard of proof that you have to, to in order to get that, to, to win a, a domestic violence restraining order, like it's the lowest standard of proof. We went to that and won. Like there was no restraining order granted. But in the month or I think it was actually like a month, I think it was like six weeks in between when the initial filing and articles came out and when that happened, that's six weeks of one side of the story being out there and you like the anything. damage is done. They I can't tell say you anything. not to say yeah. anything. 
and I've had great legal representation and they've advised me well along the way. And the advice is don't say anything. And it kills me because like, I want to defend myself. I want to get the truth out there. And then it's like, okay, well, what is the, what's the reparation for the damage that's been done here? And it doesn't seem like there's any sort of, yeah. Yeah. And maybe there's, maybe there's some sort of update that can be made to the, to that process. Like I also see the other side of it where, you know, for people that are in those situations that need a place to be able to go and like get help and to get out of a bad situation and to protect themselves. Like we never want to discourage that from happening either. No. So I don't know what the solution is here, right. but just like having talked to people in professional sports and like a lot of people have reached out and like, Hey man, I went through something similar. This is what they did to me or this is what happened in my case or this is what it was seemingly was helpful or whatever. Like this is a thing that happens a lot. Again, from I don't I just know what happened with me. Of just course. from what this I've been told, case. right? This is your but instance, yeah. It's um you know, the the general way is like you make these allegations and then tell the person you're gonna file this thing and in order and they you know, the, the implication is it's gonna be very bad for you and so then money exchanges hands and I've talked to multiple people where that's been the case. Right. So it's just like uh people can do that and threat and make and then you have to pay to get rid of it yeah 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 i you know i don't know how they have data and it's tough that they don't have to attach their name to it because then there's no real repercussions for them you know yeah um i'm sorry you had to go through that man yeah you know i know that doesn't help or anything but i think a lot of people probably feel that way we all have our struggles and i don't like i'm very fortunate to be in the position i am even with all this stuff like i'm not blind to that and so again i don't want to i never want to come off as like oh woe is me and like i was victim I don't here think or anything like that. that i mean i believe it's, that you were a victim there and i'll just say that for myself but um yeah. i don't think you sound like that at all yeah um, um it was a tough situation we all have tough situations in life and like hopefully something that i say about how i got through it or how i am trying to like learn from past mistakes and be better is helpful to the next person yeah. that, that goes through it. So it makes their time a little bit easier than my time was. Well, that's, um, the, it's thoughtful but, of you. It's kind of a powerful to get to that place. I'm sure it's been an interesting journey, you know, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's been interesting. I think in like 10 years, when I look back on it, I'll be, um, yeah, I think there'll be a lot of things in my life that have happened because of changes that I made during this time period that I'll be very happy with. Yeah. Um, it's just very hard to like see off into the future when you're so in it. Mm-hmm. And when you feel like, you know, your what everything you knew about your world is completely like gone. Like you're basically just torn down to zero. Like, where do I go from here? What am I doing? Um, but I, as far as like updating the software and stuff, I think I'll be happy in in five or ten years that like changes that I've made because of this experience um, have helped me like grow as a person. And grow, wow! You know. Fuck, dude, you're fucking. In. It's a. It is a high road attitude um, oh. to hear from for, you. For me, like I can't, I can't go any other road yeah. because yeah, it'll just. It's poisonous. Yeah. If I didn't have someone to talk to, I would not have, I would not have made it through this. Um, that's a huge thing. Like, it's scary to talk about things a lot of times and to, like be viewed as vulnerable or to be viewed. You know, you don't know how the other person's going to view your perspective, but it's so important. Uh, so I'd say, yeah, first thing, like find someone to talk to, whether it's a therapist, whether it's a friend, a family member. You know, a lot of people aren't fortunate enough to have family members around to talk to or they don't have those relationships, but find someone that you can talk to. Um, And be honest with. Yeah, like be able to just tell it how you're feeling it. Yeah, be honest about how you're feeling. Yes. Um, that's, That's the biggest thing I'd say. And then having something, some goal, like humans need a purpose. Like we don't do well when we're like just existing nope. for, and uh, we don't have anything to do. And if you can find some purpose that's controllable, that like, you know, for me it was business. Like I had a business. Mm-hmm. So I woke up in the morning. I'm like, okay, how do we get this thing firing? Or how do we get, uh, make a better video? Or how do we edit this way? Or, okay. I got to, 
figure out the, you know, what hire do we need to make? So there was something that I was in control of that I was actively doing mm-hmm. that I could distract myself in a way from the negative stuff and like focus on something that was like aspirational. Like, okay, in the future, when all this stuff is done, because it's going to be done at some point, right? Maybe a, a day, it might be a year, it might be 10 years. It's not going to last forever. So, at some point in the future, when it's done, what is it that I have that I've been building that I can like aspire? What position do I want to be when this is done? Like, and can I make progress towards that? Mm. Like, that's how I is like talking about it and having some sort of aspirational goal that I was chasing. Um, but yeah, like the support group is is so big, man. Yeah. Like just being able to vocalize your feelings is important. Yeah. 